<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Exponential Potential. And today we are talking about biohacking confidence. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. We have our very wonderful special guest, Claire Oatway. And hi, Claire. Great Hello. to see you. <laughs> so this month, is all about confidence and courage. And we're going to be delving deep. We're going to be giving you some really powerful tools on how you can create more confidence and courage in your life, allowing you to step into more of what you want. Um, so, and today we are focusing on biohacking with confidence. We're going to give you some top tools. As always, Claire's going to share her favorite tips. And before um, we get into it, let me just introduce, for those that don't know Claire, I'll introduce you to our wonderful, uh, my co-host and great friend and just such a wonderful human being, Claire Oatway. She is a highly experienced expert, and I know she's going to cringe at this because it's like <laughs> picking her up, but she is truly a highly experienced expert leadership and strategy consultant and coach, working with executives and high achievers and entrepreneurs who want to really elevate their business um, with a strong, positive growth mindset. And Claire really infuses uh, a sense of play in that and curiosity. So it's not just sort of heavy strategy. She makes it fun and highly effective and productive. So welcome, Claire. So great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for the build up, guys. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put you on the spot. So today's title, Biohacking Confidence. And we might have a few people in the audience thinking, well, that's just a load of corporate gump, guff. <laughs> a load of corporate guff. What is it? And I know it's not, people. <laughs> it truly isn't. What, what do you mean, Claire? What do you mean by biohacking confidence? So in, in terms of biohacking, um, we do it all of the time without realising that we're actually biohacking. So biohacking is, is actually understanding that you are a biological creature with a lot, you're an energetic creature, but you're also a biological creature. Um, and there are ways of adjusting your environment or adjusting your internals, sorry, puppies here, um, adjusting what's going on within your biology in order to uh, adjust your outcomes. So the, the most simple example is you could describe uh, changing your diet as biohacking it's making a subtle adjustment to your lifestyle which affects how you are as a as a person and, and moving forward and, and what I love around confidence and courage in particular is that those are psychological states they're emotional states mm -hmm. and actually they're emotional states that are influenced by our brain chemistry and physiology and if they're affected by that, and they have been over millennia since, you know, since we were cave people, um, it, we understand that we have kind of these brain impulses that keep us safe. And so if you, if you play with that concept, that means that you can learn to adjust how your brain responds, how your brain acts. You can turn down the dial or turn up the dial. So you're... Yeah, you're hacking your own, the own, your own biology of your brain in order to achieve an outcome. That's a very simplistic mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> approach to biohacking. It covers many spheres of mindfulness and also you know, nutrition, uh, kind of body movement and so on. But, but I think, you know, particularly for this topic, there are so many ways that you can adjust who you are and how you show up to have you know, great impact and great success. Mm. And I just want to add to that. So biohacking as well, when you're doing those those different things, you're actually like say it's not just a mind thing because our mind and our bodies work together, don't they? It's you're actually changing your biology on a cellular level. Yep. You're, you're talking to yourselves through your through your language, whether that's like say whether that's nutrition or movement or 
things like that. So I, I can't wait to get more into that. Um, it's such a juicy topic uh, <laughs> because you, we can do a lot with our minds, but when we get our bodies involved as well, it makes it so much more powerful. Yeah, yeah, love yeah, that, yeah. love that. So, um, who 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 is this for? Who is who would you say biohacking is for, or who? What sort of people would be? Would this be helpful for? So, I I think that um, you know, many people can actually bring in elements of biohacking into the world. I think it's very helpful for uh, people who are playful and curious, in particular, or can I have some of that spirit? maybe working within an environment that that doesn't come through um and the, the reason why I say that is you, you do need some curiosity to trust that the process will happen just mm -hmm. you know and also to let go if it doesn't quite work how you think you, you're you're adjusting you're you know, this, this until yeah in a few years time I'm sure You'll be able to have a pinprick and a scan and it will tell you exactly what to adjust. But each of us uh, has a different body. Each of us has a different experience. We've grown up in different environments and different cultures. And so you know, what might work for me may not work for you. But you know what? If I'm in a playful state, then that's all right. I'll just try something else. And then if that doesn't work, well, I'll try something else. If that works, I'll play with that and, and help it. Mm. Um. And so I think kind of it works particularly for people that, that have that essence and people that want to, um, who kind of want to push themselves forward, who want to grow. So, uh, you yeah, know, some aspects of biohacking, is, is, for example, in sports performance, in elite sports performance, you'll see everything around nutrition and mindset and as well as the kind of physical exercise and just this push, this drive, um, to succeed so I I think it works best for those that are curious and playful and those that are on a trajectory a growth trajectory um who who want to who want to experience something a bit different mm. and as you say trusting the process so you've got nothing to lose by giving it a go have you, no. No. you know, no. so yeah why not try it I think that's the motto for life, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is absolutely with anything. Yeah, you've got. What have you got to lose? Just try yeah. it, and if it doesn't work, um, oh well, try a different way. Yeah, that, and that's yeah, yeah, and that is also a confidence builder. Just having that attitude, isn't it? Because confidence, that confidence of, well, I don't want to try it because what if it goes wrong or. What if I make a mistake or what if I fi fail? So that's all wrapped around confidence. It's like, well, why not try it? And if it yeah. doesn't work that way, try it another way or try it again. And, and some of these little micro shifts are so helpful. I mean, what you and I have in common is, is uh, an understanding that deep reflection uh, is so powerful and spending time in nature is so powerful it's hugely powerful um in in so many different ways but not a, you don't always have access to that throughout the day you're all mm. kind of in the heat of the moment and so one of the reasons why I enjoy some of these playful interjections is that you, you know they're, they're fast they're snippy you can I'm at work and bring it in um mm. you know you don't have to necessarily plan or make a big commitment mm. So let, let's get let's get into it of um, some of the things that you can actually do. So what are your favorite tricks, tips, tools that you do to build that confidence through biohacking? What do you do? Well, yeah, so, so it's the combination of things that I do and things that I advise uh, my clients to do. And, and they can be at a, a number of different levels. Um, the first one is around at a physical level and around um posture and and sometimes even color you can see uh, for those of you that are listening in today i'm wearing a very bright pink and a very bright red jumper <laughs> it's, it's very lovely, lovely. it's yes. joyful it's uh i'm here um and as as women uh we 
especially as women, we have a whole uh, arsenal, a whole range of tools that we can deploy that bring confidence. And sometimes, Mm. yeah, don't judge the superficial confidence, but sometimes a red lipstick, a different heel, a different jot of colour can bring a lot to you and how you feel, how you show up. Just yeah. Um, so so bringing through aspects of color or bringing through aspects of fit and your physical appearance can have you know almost that that shift. And yeah, you, know, you hear this advice when, for example, people go for job interviews, like dress as if you've already got the job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like it gives these social cues to the people that you know you, you should be there because you fit in, but also you clothing can shift who we are how we how we show up how we stand how we are poised um because when you when you when you look good when you look in your you know and you look yeah I, I I look I'm I look great you know this suit is amazing or this top is amazing or and when you look good you you feel good it's kind of a it marries together doesn't it and I think into some people I know some of my friends certainly and and clients I've had is you know you they say you always dress so colorful colorfully um and my wardrobe is full of colors and it's I don't have the confidence to wear that so what is there something that you would suggest so you say yeah great put something bright and, but some people don't even have the confidence to do that is there any well, suggestions that you would make for that? I know. So sometimes, um, yeah, I think I think we both love colour, and mm. in in some situations, that's not it's not appropriate. Um, and yeah, sometimes structure of clothing can make a difference. Mm-hmm. So shifting and and even. We, don't completely dismiss colour because it can come through really boldly in accessories or mm. yeah, you know, kind of. I, I love the fact that everyone has a journal around at, at the moment and yeah, and a, and a pen and a phone. And so you know, some of these aspects that you can bring through that you can um, use in your life, like right, yeah, this is the colour of I'm I'm here. Um, I think kind of another aspect of of physicality as it were is around posture as as well and so you if you know, if you are not able to adjust or, or change your your clothing or your style you can certainly adjust your posture mm. um and yeah you know, I've I've been a public speaker you know for, for many years talking to hundreds of people at times last minute <laughs> um but posture is one of the go-to's for me in terms of getting ready and overcoming fears or anxiety um and again kind of in that public I'm going to use public speaking as an example because Mm -hmm. it's one that many people um struggle with 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 confidence uh and I'm going to blatantly recycle Amy Cuddy's work um and I'm I'm sure you've come across Amy Cuddy but Amy Cuddy is phenomenal um, in terms of psychology uh, and neuroscience in in the US, and she'd she'd examined um, physicality. She has a if you look for the YouTube video around the the Wonder Woman pose, you'll be able to find it really quickly. Or anything. Yes, um, and so she'd examined a lot of sports personalities uh, and sports teams who were winning, and she found that actually they, there was a common posture that was coming through when someone's like on fire they're like big you know yeah if if they've scored a goal they're like yeah yes fantastic they yes. take up space mm. openly expressive um and so kind of one of the exercises that she encourages you to do if you're if you're lacking confidence at any point is to stand like wonder woman and um, I've got puppy on my lap, so I'll, I'll need to talk through rather than actually <laughs> I can, show you. I can show. Can I? Can I? Can I show? It's kind of chest out, isn't it? Chest out. Your hands on your hips. 
just your shoulder up high, shoulders, shoulders back, chin up high, looking out, uh, feet hip width apart, solid and grounded, like I am powerful. And just shifting into that state for, for 20, 30 seconds, this year, mm. again, this is not a massive shift. And if you're, if you're in an office environment, go to the loo and close the door. No one's going to know. <laughs> yeah, ideally do it in front of a mirror and you can see how darn powerful you are. But there are always secret cubby holes that you can do this. Or maybe we should call them secret cuddy holes from now on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need cuddy. <laughs> but it instantly shifts um, how you feel. What's going on, I, I guess, in your energetic body as well is that when you are aligned in that way, you're grounded. Everything mm. just drops. The stuff that doesn't serve you drops to the floor. Um, but you show up in a different way. And mm. that's something that uh, there's something that is within the gift of nearly everybody on the planet in in some form or other. Um, yeah, you know, I know we've talked a lot about how different emotions show up in your body. Um, and yeah, you know, when I felt when I felt under chronic stress, I I know that I start to hunch forward and I I protect. I protect my insides when I'm, or if I've had a piece of conflict, I feel like someone's like punched me in the gut. So I kind of shrink back. But actually, when you start to notice that, start to adjust it, just start to open up in the tiniest ways, become aware of what's going on in your body and, you know, just feel, stand and feel like, you know, it's okay, strong, can handle this. Mm. Okay. Mm. Stand tall. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Super, superhero stance. Um, and something that I always say is with clients as well is get your big girl pants on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those superhero pants. Get your big girl pants. Obviously, if it's a man, and I don't say get your big girl pants on, but <laughs> <laughs> no judgment here. Yeah. And then, well, maybe yeah. they do, yeah. <laughs> But actually, oh, really it's, it does make it makes such a difference in in terms of how how you feel. And Tony Robbins talks about this a lot in terms of physiology, and you see it in different aspects of of confidence um, and communication. If you if you've got a phone call you're dreading, if you smile. Before mm -hmm. the phone call, people can pick that up. And again, it starts to shift who you are, how you show up, what you look like. Um, you know, it, it shifts your mood and it's within your power. Yeah, you know, at first, depending on where you are, you, it, it might only be a small, you might be coming from a very low base and it's a very small shift. But just trust the process and, and keep committed to it. Just keep making those changes, keep observing, keep making, you're in charge of your body. Yes, you totally. Yes, yeah, love that. Stand to superhero pose. You, you've got this. Well, and you know, and it, you, what's funny though? Can I just point out? So, what's yeah. funny? So, Claire, for those that can't see, Claire has a gorgeous, uh, a little. Um, I can't think of the name, but our, our little mascot, Enzo, the, the <laughs> that hand. <laughs> and yeah. as Claire, what's interesting is he's usually really curled up on Claire's lap and sleeping. And as Claire was describing what she was doing and standing tall and doing a superhero stand, a Wonder Woman stand um, with all that power, Enzo actually stood up. So he felt the energy of Claire and he sat up. So, you know, and he's usually fast asleep, isn't he? So that was interesting yeah. to see him feel that energy. And, you know, we, I, I do a lot of examples within the workplace. And you can imagine kind of the difference of walking into a, a busy office like that. You, mm. you get, mm. you know, mm. kind of is, um, intoxicating is probably too strong a word, but people notice at a, mm -hmm. at a subliminal level, really. Um, and, in terms of how you're showing up. and it's not coming across arrogantly like mm. with you know I am the big I am it's more it's a quiet confidence it's a like you say it's subtle it's assertive it's a not 
arrogant and look at me everybody it's just that slight change in your posture and it's like oh who's that person you know the way you walk yeah, yeah. so so the word that I really love is attached this is grace yeah I think yes yeah you know, very much an aspect of grace and this as you say it's the it's the calm inner confidence and mm. you and I both know because we've had this conversation that's you know it still might be superficial in you know on that inner level until it takes hook but to the rest of the world mm. just there um yeah so the, the first level is you know kind of think about how you're how you're dressing how you're you know, how you're showing up how you might bring color through as a reminder of you know who, who I am today mm. um and we've got the physicality of your body and how that can you know, really adjust your frame of mind um, and also offer cues out to people around you. Um, I, ne- I would next look at emotions mm-hmm. and where where you are emotionally. And there's a there's a super quick trick. And and Jen, I'll look to you for some of the science, as it were, behind it. But there's a really good trick called uh, gridding um, that you can use, and it's a bit of an embodiment technique. Uh, so you get a bit of paper in front of you and you draw um, a three by three grid or a four by four grid um, in front of you. So you think about the emotion that you want to feel through the day. So you might, um, you know, uh, let's, let's work with fun and playful. Mm-hmm. And in each box, you choose a different word to describe that. So fun, playful, curious, uh, imaginative uh risk taking uh, positive optimistic um adventurous adventurous I don't know. <laughs> joyful there we go mm, we yeah have, yeah we've, we've now got nine words for playful um and then you you go back through and then you look at each word and then you bring to mind a time when you were that emotion you felt that emotion so fun when was, when was fun actually fun for me it's just like uh, play with Enzo there's new little ball yeah so you do that and it's just like <laughs> so do you just, <laughs> yeah I love it I love watching him and he's kind of like just throwing the ball to one side or the other side so go back to that experience and then feel it in your body just for you know, just for a short one, two, three seconds. Uh, go through every single word. And there'll be one word, maybe, that particularly resonates with you or you particularly want to show, or you need to show up as. Um, so adventurous, for example, could hmm. be, you know, actually adventurous. I really want to delve deeper into that one. And you go to that next level down. What was it? What were you doing? Um, you try to summon the experience back up in terms of as, as much of your sensory um, gifts as you can. You think about what it smelled like, what it felt like, what you were doing, how you were looking, what was around you. Um, just to go back into that place and then feel it in your body. And then kind of say, that's how I want to feel today. How I want to feel today. Hold on to it and carry it with you throughout the whole day hugely it's hugely powerful yeah Yeah, I love that exercise that is writing it down in a grid and then thinking of a time when you felt that last Mm -hmm. and how it felt and as you say the the brain does not know the difference between what is happening now and, and your thoughts so by you just thinking about it it will activate the hormones to for you to feel that way so again, it's an energetic, biological, cellular yeah. shift. Yeah. And then you you keep hold, that already elevates you and raises your frequency. It raises how you feel. It makes you feel that way. It makes you feel good. So it makes your day a lot easier a lot, and brings in all of those aspects. I love that. I love that gridding. And I think um, for some, sometimes if you're feeling low, you you forget that you've had those experiences. So there's mm. there's, a, <clears throat> there's a way of playing with that technique um, by embodying somebody else. So you can look to somebody else, you know, 
I don't know. Who for you is playful on the entire planet over time, space? You know, who who personifies playful? Graham Norton. Graham Norton. Okay, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> or James. Corden. Actually, most people know James Corden because it's mine. A lot of people know like James Corden or Graham Norton. Very okay. playful. So let's play a game with with James Corden and imagine you're sat at a table and sat opposite you is James Corden and and look at him and and kind of I can already see the glint in his eye and the kind of cheeky grin. Hang on, what I was having a cappuccino somewhere. What am I doing here? And you're (laughs) around your table, Um, but have a look at him and, and observe him and then you know kind of you can then start to wander around the table. Look at him, look at him from behind, look at uh, what he's wearing, look at the texture of his hair, kind of look at look at all the bits that are James Corden and then sit in James Corden's seat. That's James Corden. You know, how does it how does that feel? What does that what does it feel like? What what are you seeing differently? What what's the inner chatter that goes on in James Corden's head? Like, you know. Mischievous. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just spend and, a little and, bit of time there. Yeah, love that. And how can I play with this? Because it's all his whole thing, play, yeah. isn't it? So that's yeah. brilliant. And it then I can see why you would put yourself in somebody else's shoes that is very playful because sometimes it's hard to imagine that for yourself when you're not playful. Yeah. But by choosing somebody that is, it will ignite your own playfulness. Yeah. Yep, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, and Love I'm it. a strong, I'm a huge strong believer that um the qualities that you recognize in other people are qualities that you've seen in yourself. You recognize them from yourself. And so it just it connects back. Even though you may not acknowledge it, it connects back. You wouldn't recognize it if you hadn't felt it. Can you say that again? Because that's <laughs> a really powerful statement. So yeah, say that again. So sometimes in one-to-one connections, you know, you might see someone and you're like, oh, you're so graceful. Oh, you're so graceful. And there are qualities in that person that you see, that you appreciate, that come through really strongly. And a lot of the time we stop at that and go, that person is so graceful. Actually, the reason we can spot that that person is graceful is because we recognize it and often we recognize it because we have that quality or we have experienced that quality in the past and that's what connects um whether it's at an energetic level or a cognitive level I'm not sure but that's what connects you can only really see that in other people if you if you've been it um and so 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 when you appreciate somebody else's positive attributes or way they are like having grace being generous being playful when you recognize that in somebody else it's because it you also have that within you that's really powerful thank you for sharing that Claire that's brilliant brilliant genius so I hope listeners that are listening to that really soak up that all of this but that particular segment is so powerful and it I just as you were saying that I could just feel the energy of that lift anybody you know all those little or the connections that I feel by somebody delving into that will really help you believe that that's also within you because you are recognizing that you're able to recognize that yeah so you know, we've, we've been looking at different um, biohack uh, aspects for, for confidence. And, and so, you know, kind of some of the physical bits, some of the um, emotional regulation, some of the kind of choices that you make can similarly set you up for, for success. If you, you know, if, if you want to feel more courage, if you want to feel more confident. And... There is one other thing that I do want to touch on because it's such a crucial element and around courage um, is fear. And I think this is really beneficial because so many people get stuck in fear of doing something. So what can you offer around courage and the the final element of confidence and courage? So, you know, there's a 
there's a thing around, you know, what would your billboard statement be? And, you know, I want two billboards. I want one billboard that says anything is possible. Mm -hmm. And I want another billboard that says, that gives the definition of courage because people don't understand courage. Um, Many people think that courage is fearlessness because often we attach courage to, you know, I don't know, times of great strife or wartime or something, you know, kind of loads of these big aspects of what courage is or facing as and and very masculine very masculine yeah Mm. yeah, for sure but courage doesn't mean that courage Mm. is actually um understanding a fear seeing a fear and choosing to move forward choosing to move through that fear um so courage could be around public speaking we've talked about public speaking Mm-hmm. You know, kind of, you may be afraid that you'll stumble or that you'll trip as you go, I've, I've tripped and I've gone on stage. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> Oops. Yeah, I've definitely looked like a baboon on stage. Um, but you have a what? A about, baboon? <laughs> a baboon. <laughs> but I'm a buffoon, sorry. <laughs> You've looked like a buffoon. Your perception, though, that's your perception that you look like a buffoon. Yeah, it's my, it? well. my fear. My yeah, fear that yeah, I would yeah. show up to be that way. Um, yeah. But actually, you know, courage is is letting those fears come through and then going, you know what, let's move past that. I'll keep, I'll keep listening to the cues because fear is trying to keep me safe and, you know, there might be some physical reason why I shouldn't do something. Um, mm-hmm. But actually, uh, courage, courage doesn't have to be this big masculine aspect. And um, one of the pieces of work that you can do is, is to start to identify uh, what's, what is it, what's the fear attached to? Start to spell it out. And when you start to spell it out, then you can start to diminish it because you can see whether or not it's going to be reality or yeah, just, just give it space and, and keep moving through. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you're like self-awareness of what those fears really are and are they really true and breaking them down. Yeah. 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 And then micro steps or big leaps. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah. That you. is true courage, isn't it? Moving through, having that fear and doing it anyway. And we've got, we've got a month of courage and confidence. So yes. yeah, we, we won't do justice uh, to the topic in, in a short time, but I think kind of in, you know, for me, it's really important to understand that anybody has the power to be courageous. Mm-hmm. in just a short moment it could be the moment that you you know you're outside the doctor's room and you open the door yeah that's that's courage it could be um when you when you show up with honesty in a relationship and say what's well, you know say something's gone wrong or something is mm-hmm. going wrong yeah that that's courage it's the courage to shift something to to recognize that you know that you you're scared because you want to protect you know status quo but you're prepared to move forward mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it's every everybody has access to courage yes and and focusing on the outcome of you by you doing something that you are fearful of yeah. focusing on what the outcome would be if you did it and what yeah. would happen if you don't you know, what are the benefits of you stepping into that? Yeah. How's that benefiting you? How's that benefiting others? Takes that pressure off as well, doesn't it? For sure. Well, so, I think um, that's, that was just, wow, Claire, that was fantastic. So many really, really beneficial tools. Um, and I hope we've helped our listeners um, with this. I mean, it's certainly given me some extra tools that I hadn't had before. So thank you. Um, putting them in my toolkit (laughs) (laughs) Um, and you have you have a gift don't you which is also can be also used for courage yeah yeah and it's uh, we talked about it in one of the recent episodes around your perfectly written life and we've been using this as a perspective exercise to work out where you're going to go next um but it's a series of steps that you can go through uh that, that starts to examine your journey starts to examine your positive attributes and also what you've overcome in terms of challenges um, and today we've been talking about the range of emotions and experiences that you've had in the past and 
and how you can, you know, once you've done them once, or if you can imagine, manage, imagine them or see them in other people, you can repeat. You definitely can repeat the process. Mm-hmm. So, so the exercise um, in a perfectly written novel will you know, take you through that in a structured way, and there'll be uh, insight. You know, there'll be traces um, from your past that you can draw on, and then similarly, um, you know, by no means goes far enough into to fear. But being able to see those times when you have been resilient against mm-hmm. your challenges and realising that you can overcome those challenges um, gives you so much more so much more courage to repeat that process because you, you, you do it every single day. Every yes. single day we all have these small courageous acts that we don't recognizing ourselves so with this exercise it's called what's it called Claire sorry again give it again uh, your perfectly written novel right yeah. um and it helps you focus on what you've already accomplished and achieved and what the things that you've already gone through and yeah. know and writing that down and being aware of that then allows you to have more confidence because you're like well I've got through that situation I did that so if I got through that one I can get through this one yep yeah brilliant yep. it's the proof <laughs> yes yeah you've already done it <laughs> we're always more capable and um than we believe we are aren't we yes yeah, okay well is there anything else you want to add claire no no, no, no brilliant no, no. so we are uh we'll see you on our show next time exponential potential and again all about confidence and courage in this month and we will see you soon Take care. Bye. (laughs) Ciao.